Welcome to Rocky Railway. My name is Miss Ashton and this is Miss Livy. And we're so excited to be riding the rails with you this week. We'll start every day right here at Sing and Play Express. We'll help you sing, have fun, and celebrate Jesus' power. Let's start off the evening with a song about Jesus' power pulling us through. So everybody stand up and get ready to sing and dance. We trust in you, Jesus, you're all, you're all, you're all that we need. Your power will pull us through. We're trusting in you, we're trusting in you. You give us hope and life that's forever. You make us bold and we stand together. journey there's no looking back with jesus to lead us we're on the right track oh, 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 oh. wide open spaces for wide open eyes we're looking ahead for the next big surprise oh, oh, oh. Spaces for wide open eyes. We're looking ahead for the next big surprise. Oh, 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 oh. We trust, we trust, we trust in you, Jesus. You're all, you're all that we need. Your power will pull us through. We're trusting in you, we're trusting in you. You give us hope. what it would be like to journey on a steam train through the wild, vast, beautiful Rocky Mountains. A long time ago, trains were the fastest way to travel when you had to go far or up a big hill. Not many people ride steam trains like this anymore. Think about a, t t think about a time when you've ridden a train. One time, I rode a train while I was at Disney World. Steam trains get their power from the steam engine. Imagine that the steam engine is a little bit like this tea kettle. When the water inside boils, it pushes the steam through a hole and it whistles. Pretty cool, huh? Inventors figured out a way to capture steam and turn it into power, enough power for a train to pull thousands and thousands of pounds over tall, rocky mountains. Trains have the power to cross miles and miles of deserts, carrying things to people who need them. So here at Virtual VBS, your crew is your family or your friends that may be around you. So I want you to huddle up with your crew. Imagine that your crew has a steam train and you can load it up with whatever you want and take it wherever you want without having to cross an ocean. Be creative. You have 30 seconds to come up with something that you would carry and wear.
right, so when you hear this sound, that means it is time for you to be quiet and it's time for you to sit down and put your listening ears on. So it would take a lot of power to get things like video games or candy or toys to places far away like Japan or Alaska or Italy. This week, we're going to discover a special kind of power that you and I do have. We have Jesus' power right here, ready to help us do so many important things. Maybe when you think of power, you think of super, superheroes who have superpowers. Call out some superpowers you wish you had. I wish that I had the ability to fly. And I'm sure that you had some really cool powers that you shouted out. Maybe the word power makes you think of someone with huge muscles. Stand up and show me your best weightlifter pose. Go ahead, Miss Ashton. Nice, nice. Strong muscles and superpowers are things we usually think of when we hear about power. But God has more power than either of those. God has the power to create mountains and oceans just by speaking. God has the power to love and forgive and comfort and heal. God is even more powerful than death. Jesus is God's very own son, and he has all that power too. This week, we'll be talking about how we can trust Jesus' power to help us every single day. And later in the week, you'll hear about the life-saving power of Jesus' blood. So let's sing Power in the Blood. we're going to learn a new Bible point, an important truth from the Bible to remember. Today, we're going to explore how Jesus' power helps us do hard things. That's our Bible point. Today, whenever you hear someone say, Jesus' power helps us do hard things, you're going to answer by shouting, trust Jesus. As you say that, you're going to reach up and pretend that you're pulling a train horn. So let's practice a few times. Are you ready, Miss Livy? I'm ready. All right. Jesus' power helps us do hard things. Trust Trust Jesus. Jesus. You know, I don't think they're loud enough. I don't think so either. I think we need to do it again. Yeah. 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 All right. Jesus' power helps us do hard things. Trust Trust Jesus. Jesus. Good job, guys. We need to hang onto Jesus' power to pull us through when things get tough. All week long, we'll get to know surprising Bible memory buddies who will help us remember our Bible points. 
All our buddies are animals that you can find somewhere in the Rocky Mountains. Let's take a look. Hey there, friends. Glad you're all on board for a rambunctious week of faith and fun at Rocky Railway. I'm Ramsey, a bighorn sheep. Um, can you guess why? <laughs> okay, that was too easy. Check out these cool, curvy horns God gave me. Ram's horns can weigh up to 30 pounds. That's as much as some of our littlest preschool buddies. Wow! My horns have to be tough because we male sheep use them to keep other rams out of our territory. People who study rams say we can run into each other at 20 to 40 miles per hour. Bam! You can hear that sound for miles! Me and my herd hang out all over the majestic, massive Rocky Mountains. The Rocky Mountains rock! If you head up to find me, strap on your hiking boots. Sometimes my herd grazes in an alpine meadow. Cause that's where the good stuff is. Mm, wow, good. But the meadow makes us an easy target for predators. So we also like to climb way up those crazy cliffs. We sheep like it steep. Me and my family can hang out on a little teeny tiny ledge that's only a few inches wide. Animals like bears or coyotes can't bother us here. Whew! And check out the view! God made us just right for staying safe in those hard, rocky places. My hooves are split and have a rough skin on the bottom that grips tight to the rugged rocks. Plus, I've got excellent eyesight. No glasses for me! It may sound like climbing these cliffs and balancing on jagged ledges is hard to do, but God has given me everything I need to live here. Find food, and my family safe. I've heard that you sometimes have to do hard things too. When there's a bully at school, maybe you feel like you're in a rough, rocky place. You may not be balanced on a cliff ledge like me, but maybe you have to balance homework, chores, sports, music, and friendships. That sounds hard. Hmm, maybe coming here today and making new friends even feels like a hard thing for you. But did you know you don't face those hard things alone? No way! Jesus is right beside you. Yep, even right now. He gives you his power to climb through those mountains of worry and get through any rough stuff you gotta do. The Bible powers you up with this truth. For I can do everything through Christ who gives me strength. That means you don't have to have your own power to do hard things. Jesus' power helps us do hard things. Trust Jesus. When you see Ramsey, remember that Jesus' power helps us do hard things. Trust, Trust Jesus! Jesus. The Bible says, for I can do everything through Christ who gives me strength. Christ is another name for Jesus. Jesus' power helps us do hard things. Trust Jesus! He gives us strength that we need to power through sadness or confusion or even mad feelings. Let's sing a song about Jesus' awesome power. So stand up and get ready to sing. Back, but 
Everybody clap your hands. Now stop. I feel it in the air right now. It's all around. I see it everywhere. It's the power. Yeah, yeah, God's power. It's the power to move and it start. It's the power to heal your broken heart. It's the power. So we'll see you later at Rocky Wrap Up. So we hope you enjoy your first day of VBS. All right, well, I've heard some commotion around the rail yard today about a rock slide last night. You know, that could be really bad. Maybe we can find somebody and ask them about what happened. Oh, excuse me, do you work here? <laughs> do I work here? Look, friend, I've been working on the railroad all the live long day. You know, my name, I don't just work here on the railroad. I drive the trains. I'm an engineer. My name is Cam Track. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. I'm Miss Ashton, and wow, working on as an engineer on the trains, having a name like Cam Track, you must really love trains. Well, you know, when you know trains like I do, uh, it, they just become a part of you. Hmm. Wow, that's pretty deep. But maybe you can help us. You know, my friends and I, we heard something about a rock slide last night. And you heard right. I mean, these big giant boulders fell down from the mountain right on the tracks. So we got to get them out of the way. Wow, that could really cause some problems. Uh, you know it. Because we've got an engine we need to get down the mountain tomorrow. And it's a good thing that I'm here to help you clear the tracks. You really think that you can lift a massive boulder? I don't think. I know. Okay. Well, if you know so well, then maybe you should just warm up on this rock right here. What? This rock here? Oh, yeah. That big rock right these, there. These rocks here? Yeah. Well, you might want to stand back in case uh, this just you know, hits you when it goes flying. Okay. So. Okay. All right. <laughs> Wait just a second here. Oh. Oh. <clears throat> it's no use. This is just too hard. It's funny that you say that because today we just learned that Jesus' power helps us do hard things. Trust Jesus. You know, we all have to do hard things, whether it be taking a big test at school, it could be standing up to a bully for our friends, or oh. even taking care of a no, sick no, no, no. family member. Oh, 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 oh. oh. What are you doing? Haven't we already determined that I'm not strong? We have. None of us is strong enough. All those things, they can be really, really heavy, but I know somebody who can handle it all. Jesus. Jesus can always take our load off. He knows exactly what to do and exactly what to say. Hmm. Wow, you know, Jesus sounds like a really uh, good friend to have. Well, I've got to figure out how to get those boulders off the tracks, so maybe Jesus can help out with some good ideas for me. 
Maybe so. And tell you what, when we're done here, I'll head right on over there and help you with those massive boulders. Sounds good. Thanks. All right. See See you later. Hi, guys. Welcome to Imagination Station. I'm Miss Beth, and I am so excited that you are here with us today. I can't wait to see what incredible things we'll discover about Jesus' power this week. We're going to have so much fun together. But before we go any further, I have a question for you guys. Who brought their imagination with them today? Oh, my goodness. I was worried you might forget your imagination since this is only day one of Rocky Railway VBS. So I was talking to my friend Ramsey. I think... I think you met him earlier this this evening, and guess what? He is a big horned sheep, and he told me that he and his friends love climbing in the Rocky Mountains. You know, they live out in that area, and the mountains are so beautiful. The scenery is so spectacular, but Ramsey said that sometimes it's kind of hard to live in the mountains, especially when it snows. So when Ramsey is in the mountains, in the snowy mountains, it's a good thing he has his sure-footed feet that come in handy. His feet help him do hard things, like walk on slippery, snowy mountains. They help him to climb high, narrow ledges so that he can get away from predators like bears. Even when it snows, Ramsey knows that Jesus' power helps us do hard things. Trust Jesus. There. That is better. I think your imaginations are up and running. And that's a good thing because each day at Imagination Station, you will get to be a part of all kinds of fun activities and experiments that will help us discover all the more about Jesus' power. And you'll get to play with cool, sciencey, fun gizmos every single day. So we'll get to day one's fun gizmo in just a minute. But I have a question for you first. So how long do you think it takes a baby bighorn sheep to be able to walk and climb as well as its mother? Do you think it takes six weeks or just one day? So I want you to think about that. And as you get an answer, you can start shouting it out. Six days or just one day. Six weeks or just one day. All right, I'm hearing all kinds of answers out there, and you know what? You all aren't agreeing on the same one. So let's get a drum roll, and let's see what the answer is. All right, use your legs or your tabletop near you. Ready? Okay. The answer is a baby bighorn can walk and climb as well as its mother within just one day. Imagine that. That is awesome. Okay, we better get back on track. It's so easy for me. I just, I love learning all of these cool things. All right, I want you guys to grab some paper and a marker or a crown or a pencil, and I want you to draw a train track. Yours might look like this. Oh, it's upside down. Or it might look like this. These are some that I drew earlier today. And as you can see, I used the entire page. I went from one corner to the other. But guess what? Your train track may not look like that. You might have a really short train track, or you might have a really curvy train track. You might want to add mountains, since we are in the Rocky Mountains. You might want to add trees or a little stream. While you're working on your train track, I'm going to give you a few moments to do that. I'm going to add a few trees to mine. So let's just see here. I wonder if my friends are making really long train tracks like I did, or if they're making super short train tracks. I wonder if they've got trees like I'm putting on mine, or I wonder if they're putting a stream because I'm not putting a stream on mine. All right, how are you guys doing with your train tracks? Are you about ready to show those to me? You know, I'm going to add one more thing to mine while you're working on your train track. Let's see here. I hope you guys are almost done. Let's see. Mine's almost done. All right. Are you ready to show me? All right. Here's mine. Put yours up so I can see. I have a few trees on mine. Some of you have trees on yours, and some of you put 
water on yours and mountains. And that's exactly what the Rocky Mountain area is all about, mountains, water, and trees. But I also put today's power, or Bible point on here, which is Jesus' power helps us do hard things. Trust Jesus. All right, guys. Well, today, let's uh, talk about what we're discovering with what Jesus' power does for us. You know, sometimes we have to do hard things. And sometimes we don't understand why. And we may not even be able to control what's happening around us. And sometimes that's not just the case for you guys. Sometimes that's the same thing for your parents. We deal with hard things too. Our lives seem to be going in all different directions. Well, we're going to see what that's like. So this is my off-rail roller. And it kind of looks a little, hmm, it's black and yellow. Maybe not too interesting, but I am going to lead you through how to put yours together, and we'll see exactly what it does. So I want you to pull out your imagination station bag that you got at the Tuesday night drive through and I want you to dig through there until you find the bag that has the pieces in it that we need for our off-rail roller. Okay, so I'm going to go through this with you. This looks like it's hard, but I'm going to help you just like Jesus' power helps us do hard things. Trust Jesus. I'm going to help you put this together. So as we open this up, I see, oh my goodness, I see a short yellow straw. I see a, yon, a long yellow straw. I see a white rubber band. I see a paper clip. I see two black plastic round knobs. And this one is flat on this side. This one has a a hump on it. It reminds me of the top of a Lego when you connect a Lego to one underneath it. That's what that kind of makes me think of. So here's what we need to do. We're going to use your paper clip like it's a needle. Have you ever threaded a needle and then used that needle to sew or stitch, put things together? Well, that's what we're doing here. So we're going to take the, the knobby uh, plastic piece the one that looks like it's part of a Lego. And we're going to start from the outside and use your paper clip that has that rubber band on it. And we're going to feed the paper clip through and then catch it on the other side. Now, I don't want to pull that rubber band all the way through. Instead, I'm going to take my long yellow straw and I'm going to anchor it right there. Okay? And then... Are you following me? I know it's hard, but I, I know you can do it. Now we're going to take the other black plastic piece, and we're going to go from the inside this time, and we're going to feed it through with our paper clip that's like a needle. And then, looky there, it kind of looks like, uh, I don't know, it doesn't look like much of anything, but guess what? It fits together perfectly, just like this one. So you can tap it together, holding on to your needle, and then get that other tiny little yellow um, straw, and we're going to poke it through on this side. So I've gotten it put together, but I need to take that paper clip off. I don't need it anymore. All right, looky there. We've got it all put together. I hope yours is put together. Here's the cool thing. If it was too hard for you, we gave you the instructions in your um, bag that you picked up with all of your gizmos. And I'm hoping you have a mom or a dad or an aunt or a big brother, somebody there that can help you with this if you're struggling because this is super cool once you get it together. Okay, so now that I have it together, we're going to go ahead and we're going to wind it up. Do you see what I'm doing? <laughs> now let me show you something here. After you do that a little bit and you let it go, it's like a propeller. That's pretty cool, but that's not what this is all about. We're going to wind it up again. All right. Let me clear me some space. I'm going to move my stuff out of the way here because I'm going to let this go, and we're going to see how far it goes across my table. It might run into something, but let's see. Wind it up as far as you can. Lay it down on something flat and let it go. <gasps> oh, it went into the water. But guess what? I've got another one. Let's try it one more time. And if you want... You can try it with your railroad that you made earlier, your tracks. See if you can keep it on there. I'm going to let it go again. Let's see if I can keep it on the table this time. Yeah, <laughs> it went all the way over. I wonder how far yours went. You know, you can keep trying and see how far you can get it each time. Try to beat your distance. And if you have a brother or sister that's doing this with you, see if you can beat their distance. Well, we are off the rails with this cool gizmo. 
And I hope you have fun experimenting with your off-rail roller. You know, you might want to try the different surfaces like I suggested. You could even do it on a wooden floor. You might try it outside in your driveway. You know, the sky's the limit. Well, really, you can't do it in the sky, but you know what I mean. All right, so this is going to be super cool to play with. And I want you to show your moms and your dads and grandmas and grandpas. But guess what? They're going to look at this and they're going to think, what in the world is that? They're going to think, what do we do? They, they'll have a hard time because they don't understand how it can do anything. Because really it can't do anything, not by itself, can it? It can't do anything until we wind it up, right? And then when we let it go, the rubber band inside gives it the power to take off. And the cool thing about that is it's just like Jesus in us. When we have Jesus in us, he gives us the power to do hard things. Trust Jesus. All right, have fun experimenting with your off-rail rollers. I'll see you tomorrow night at Day 2's Imagination Station. Bye, guys. Hey guys, welcome to Rocky Railroad VBS. This is a different year for us to do VBS. We have to get to do something different, but we want you guys to remember today that Jesus gives us the power to do hard things. But sometimes we get to do things that are easy. Can you guys think of some things that are easy for you to do? For me, I like to cook and I like to bake. So those kinds of things are easy for me. But sometimes we have to do things that are hard. Um, Basketball is hard for me. I'm not very good at that. Actually, any kind of sports would be hard for me. I'm not really good at that kind of stuff. But some things are easy for it, and some things are hard. And we need to remember that even when things are hard, Jesus gives us the power to do hard things. Trust Jesus. All right, so today our story comes from a wonderful, true book called the Bible. And I want you guys to remember one thing every day this week when we do our Bible lesson, that the Bible is always true. So everything that you read in there is going to be true. And God has shown himself to be true through the scripture. Now, I remember one time specifically something that was really hard for me was actually something very similar to this. I had to speak in front of a group of people, and I do not like to do that. Even still today, I've done it a lot of times since then, but even today, I get very, very nervous when I have to do that, and I start to get anxious, and I worry about it, and sometimes I even feel like I'm going to be sick because I don't like to be up in front of people, but every single time, Jesus has given me the power to do something that was hard for me, okay? So today, Today, our story is going to involve a man named Ananias. Now, you might not have heard too much about Ananias. We don't know a lot about him in our story, but we know that he had something very hard to do. Have you guys seen Ananias anywhere? Have you seen him? Wait. Ananias? Yeah. What are you doing? I'm, I'm, I'm hiding. What's it look like? Why are you hiding? Well, haven't you heard? Heard what? Saul, he's in town. He's come to Damascus. And he's trying to get everybody that loves Jesus. And I love Jesus, so... Right, me? but haven't you heard about Saul? Didn't you hear what happened? Yes, I heard. I, I heard that he heard. He heard Jesus' voice, and then he had this... He, he had this bright light that shone all right. about him. And then, and then uh, he also, he, uh, he fell to the ground blind. And then all of his friends kind of picked him up and they drug him here in town. Okay, but if you knew all that, why are you hiding from him? Because he is here to get people who love Jesus. And, and I love Jesus. Right, but you know that God came to Saul, right? I heard that he come to Saul, and I heard that he, he heard Jesus' voice, and I heard that there was this, uh, there was this real bright light yes. that shone down from heaven, and it was so bright that it caused him to be blind. He fell to the ground, and, and then his friends picked him up, and they drug him here to Damascus. Okay, but the disguise I'm not sure is working. We should probably just 
get rid of it. Oh, here. Thanks. Now you've blown my cover. I, I don't think it was working. You don't? No, no, not at all. It's not working. But if you knew, if you knew this that happened, why are you still hiding from him? What does Saul want with you? Because I had this vision last night. Um, and, and when I got up, it said that I was, suppo- I was supposed to go mm-hmm. to um, Straight Street. And when I got the Straight Street, I was supposed to ask for Saul of Tarsus. And then I was supposed to pray over him mm-hmm. and so he could get his sight back. Okay. And what happens when he gets his sight back? What, what Why are you afraid of going to happen when he gets his sight back? The first person he's going to see is me. And he carries these rocks and he throws them at people and he stones people. And, and then he has chains and, and he puts people in chains and he throws them in prison. And then he's got, I don't know what in the world he does with this, but I certainly don't want to find okay, out. Okay, well, I don't want to find out either. But if God has asked you to do something hard, can he help you do that? Oh, I just don't understand why he's asking me to do such a hard thing. Well, sometimes God asks us to do, to do hard things. And when God asks us to do hard things, he gives us the power to do those hard things. Trust uh, Jesus. Okay. Do you I, think you can trust Jesus enough to go find Saul? I, uh, yeah, yes. Yes. We will trust Jesus. We will trust Jesus. We'll go find Saul. We'll go find Saul. We'll pray for him. You'll pray for him. Okay. Okay. I'm you can do this. Here we go. Here you go. See ya. See ya. You can go. All right. Well, as Ananias is off to do this hard task that God has asked him to do, I want you guys to think about some things in your life that have been hard. You might be um, worried about how school is going to start. You might be worried about um, what kinds of sports you might be allowed to play in this fall. We don't know how this is going to all turn out, but we know that God has a plan for us. And we know that through all of these hard things that we are facing right now, that we can trust Jesus. Hi, welcome to Locomotion Games. Tonight we're going to play a super fun game that's all about holding tight when things get hard. You're going to need your family for this one because you're going to make a train and we don't want any trains to go off the rails. So grab your family and come and play. Here's how the game works. The first person in line is gonna be your engine. Then you'll grab the shoulders of the, the next person will grab the shoulders of the person in front of them and so forth all the way back your train. The first person's gonna run the tracks and as they run the tracks, the whole train has to follow. If the train gets loose and goes off the rails, oh no. The engine will go to the back and the game will start over with the next person becoming the engine. Let's see how it works. Ready? Go! (laughs) They're holding tight! (laughs) Oh, God! Oh, no! She got loose. All right, reform, reform. Ready, engine, come to the back. Ready? Here we go again. Go! All right, you got one loose. Ready? Let's switch. Andrew will be the engine this time. You come to the back. Here we go. Go! you had fun playing too. Just like our game, sometimes it's hard to hold on and stay together. It can be that way in life too. When we struggle, we tend to want to push people away instead of pulling together. It's normal to be frustrated or upset when we're doing something hard, but that's when we need our friends and family the most. Let's hold on tight to our friends and family because it's through them and their help and love that Jesus helps us do hard things. Trust Jesus! Welcome to our very first Rocky Wrap Up. I'm Miss Livy, and this is Miss Ashton. Each day, we'll wrap up our tremendous trip on the tracks with songs, smiles, and surprises. Every day, a Rocky wrap-up will be delightfully different. Let's sing our theme song. We trust, we trust, 
trust in you, Jesus. You're all, you're all, you're all that we need. Your power will pull us through. We're trusting in you. We're trusting in you. You give us hope and life that's forever. You make us bold and we stand together. journey there's no looking back with jesus to lead us we're on the right track oh, 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 oh. wide open spaces for wide open eyes we're looking ahead for the next big surprise oh, oh, oh. At Rocky Wrap Up, we're watching a Spotlight VBS show featuring some of you terrific travelers and the discoveries that you've made on the tracks. You'll get to see some of your faces on the screen sometime throughout the amazing adventurous week. So let's watch. Today, we explored a true story from the Bible. The Bible is God's special word for us. We traveled back to when the early church was just starting to grow to a town called Damascus. There was a man named Saul who didn't like Christians. I mean, he really didn't like Christians. Saul was kind of a big bully when it came to Christians. In fact, he wanted to arrest any Christians he found and put them in chains. A lot of Christians were afraid of Saul. One of those Christians who was afraid of Saul was a guy named Ananias. Ananias had heard of all the terrible things Saul had been doing. Ananias wanted to hide from Saul. But God had a different idea. You can read all about it in the book of Acts chapter 9. God told Ananias to go to Straight Street, where Saul was staying, and lay his hands on him so Saul could see again. Why would God ask him to do such a hard thing? You see, on his way to Damascus, Saul had seen a bright light shine down from heaven. And he heard a voice saying, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? It was Jesus talking. Jesus told Saul to go to Damascus and wait. When Saul got up from the ground, he couldn't see. He was blind. His friends led him to the city, where Saul waited and prayed to God. Meanwhile, Ananias was trying to decide whether to obey God and go help Saul. But Ananias was scared. God was asking him to do a really hard thing. 
But we know that Jesus' power helps us do hard things. So Ananias went to Saul and laid hands on him. Instantly, Saul could see again. Jesus' power helps us do hard things. Bighorn sheep like Ramsey are custom made to travel up steep mountains. When you see Ramsey, you can remember that Jesus' power helps us do hard things. Trust Jesus! There's power in Jesus. Let's sing Power in the Blood. have challenging jobs full of hard things. Every day they haul cargo, keep passengers safe, fix broken trains, and make sure that the trains arrive at their destination on time. I found a tricky train track challenge for Miss Livy and I to try together. I wonder if it will be easy or hard to do. All right, so here's the challenge. There are three tracks on this piece of paper. And I'm going to pull, we're going to pull together the corners apart to try to make three separate tracks. All right, Miss Libby? Yep. So on the count of three, we're going to pull. Okay. All right, one, two, two three. three. Oh. Well, that didn't work out. Yeah, she cool. has two train tracks, and I only have one. So why did that happen, Miss Libby? What do you think? I don't know. I thought this challenge sounded easy, but actually it's harder than it looks. What's something you thought would be easy to do, but it turned out to be a hard thing? I thought that when I played basketball, it was going to be easy, but it was not. Not for me. So you talk in your cruise at home. Let's try this challenge again. This time, we're going to try it with a track tearing tip. Because sometimes, we need someone to help us do something challenging. To help us get ready, let's shout our Bible point. Jesus' power helps us do hard things. Trust Jesus! Miss Ashton, here's a track tearing tip. Watch carefully. Put the middle part of the tracks in your mouth and then pull on the ends. Let's try it together. On the count of three, we'll pull the ends. Ready? One, two, three, pull. What happened this time? I got three perfect tracks. Nice. Sometimes doing hard things means that you have to do them more than once. And sometimes you need people around you to help you out, the way that Miss Livy gave me a track-tearing tip. 
Jesus has the power to put just the right people in your life who can support you, guide you, and help you to do tough stuff. At Rocky Railway, Jesus put you in a crew, crew full of your family and your friends who help you and encourage you. Give each member of your crew a high five and say, I'm glad that Jesus ch -ch chose you for my crew. So, while we're... <gasps> Wait, Ananias, is that you? Come yep. here, friend. Yes, it's me. Where have you been? Well, I, I, I've been to, to the house where, where Saul was. But I heard that you were too afraid to go see Saul. Well, I was, but I heard from all of my friends that Jesus' power helps you do hard things. Trust, Trust Jesus. Jesus! So what happened? Well, I, I went to the house and I said, Brother Saul, Jesus, the voice that you heard on the road, told me to come to you and to lay my hands on you that you might receive your sight. It was kind of scary. And he hadn't eaten for three days. And so it was, it was really something. Well, that's incredible. So I, I did what I was supposed to do and laid my hands on him and went. All of a sudden, he got his eyesight back. Wow. Did anything else happen? Well... I told him, I said, let's, let's get you something to eat. And, and then, and then we, we, we baptized him, and, and he's a believer in Jesus. Awesome. It sounds like God had some really big plans for Saul. It does, because Jesus' power helps you do hard things. Trust, Trust Jesus. Jesus. Well, I guess we'll see you later. Yeah. Wow. What an experience. I'm wow. glad I... Decided to do something hard. Yeah, well, thanks fun. for coming and seeing us. See you guys later. Bye. Ananias had to trust Jesus, and so do we. Let's sing a new song that celebrates how we can trust Jesus. Stand up and let's sing We Can Trust Him. with Jesus, he takes us to incredible places and shows us unbelievable things. God is right here with us always. God sightings help us watch for Jesus' awesome power in everyday life. A God sighting could be a prayer, a hug from a parent, the sunshine, or a kind word from a friend. Well, we've had a great first day at Rocky Railway. Thanks for celebrating Jesus' power with us. We can't wait until tomorrow for another day of adventure, discovery, and excitement with all of you. We'll see you tomorrow on the road.